Well, Johnny Ive, you did it. You've managed to deliver the same part for what, the fourth year in a row? Incredible job. Come on out, G give me a high five. Trust me, you deserve this one. Ooh, psych, you're a little slow, just like how you're slow to deliver products with actual innovative features. Apple had just unveiled their new iPhone 11 lineup on the 10th, and it'd be an understatement to say that some people have some choice words about this, myself included. Let's get serious though. This isn't an unbiased review of the latest and greatest iPhone. This isn't even an unboxing of one. This is purely my thoughts and opinions on the new design and features, and it's not news to anyone that I'm not a fan of Apple products, so what better person to make a video about it than me? So just looking at the body of the phones themselves, it's very easy to tell that it's an iPhone. Apple's always had a very specific design language when it comes to iPhones, and they put a lot of money into the design of their products. Just look at the cheese grit, I mean the iMac Pro. Even if you're someone who has no clue of the annual iPhone release cycle, one way or another, you'll see someone with the newest model, ask them about it, and then subsequently feel bad about yourself because your phone isn't the latest tech anymore. When it comes to design language, the consumers really care about the improvements that the next version of a product brings to the table. A lot of people usually don't care about how their phone looks, which is why millions of people are going to buy this iPhone anyway, but when companies recycle old designs, you better believe people are going to be up in arms about it. Let's take a look at Samsung, for example, because we know that's who Apple's trying to compete against when they make their not-so-subtle jabs at anonymous Android manufacturers. The Galaxy S6 and S7 have a similar design, but the S7 brought with it water resistance, micro SD card expansion, and a bigger battery. As for the S8 and S9, the smaller bezels and a bigger screen were introduced to make it stand out from previous generations. But despite a minor spec bump and the inclusion of the dual camera on the S9+, Plus. Samsung actually listened to its customers about the poor placement of the fingerprint scanner on the S8 and made it easier to reach with the S9. Apple, however, has been milking pretty much the same design for two years now with the iPhone X, and the same goes for every iPhone from the 6 to the 8. And it's because of this that Apple's created pretty much a universal design to the iPhone. And if you're still listening, then it probably means you've tabbed out and are now writing a very angry comment about how you don't speak broke, and that I wouldn't understand the pure luxurious bliss of owning an iPhone. And if that's the case, you've clearly not seen my video about my current daily driver, which I upgraded to from an iPhone. So yes, I do understand the bliss and joys of owning an iPhone. But if you don't fall into that category, congratulations! Let's talk real specs. Apple always totes that their newest CPUs are the fastest and best on the market, and I'm not arguing with them there. Numbers don't lie, and that's just the facts. Another thing you have to take into consideration, though, is that iOS is also a relatively lightweight operating system, which is why iPhones are always as fast and snappy as they are, until Apple throttles their speed to make you buy the next one. This is a big reason that iPhones have previously and still currently only have 4 gigs of RAM as opposed to some powerhouses like the Note 10 Plus, which have literally triple that amount. But I'm not going to claim anything about real world speed until we see actual speed benchmarks. Since the iPhone 11 is being released today, go take a look around after this video. I'm sure there's plenty of reviewers already covering it, and I'll try to link some in the description. The big kick in the pants is the screen, and oh boy! I was actually surprised to hear that Apple's actually using a brand new screen technology in all of their new iPhones, and I'm actually just kidding, they're all identical to last year's models. What actually really surprised me is the fact that the iPhone XR, and by extension this year's replacement to it, the iPhone 11, have a bigger screen than the iPhone XS and its upgrade that Apple's calling the iPhone 11 Pro. Now this sounds good on paper. Oh boy, a bigger screen for $300 less, what a steal. Well yes, but actually no. Let's do some big brain math here, because Apple doesn't use standard widely accepted resolutions for some reason. The 11 has a 1792 by 828 resolution screen, and the 11 Pro has a 2436 by 1125 resolution screen. And this makes sense. Better resolution for more money. But since the 11 has a bigger screen than the 11 Pro, and because the 11 has less total pixels, the pixels themselves are larger, thus giving a blurrier screen overall. That's how they get you to pay more for less. Apple didn't become a, the world's first $1 trillion company by being generous. And then the 11 Pro Max is just weird overall. It has a 2688 by 1242 resolution screen, which has the same PPI as the standard 11 Pro. In turn, this means that there's still the same amount of pixels per inch with both the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, it's just that there's more of them on the 11 Pro Max, and neither screen is actually sharper than the other. I'm not going to rip on Apple for having bad camera quality. In fact, they've proven to have some of the best cameras on the market, especially for video recording quality. But I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I hate this design. I think it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Apple pours millions of dollars into the design of their products, and this is the best they could come up with? It reminds me of an electric stove. Or maybe surprised Pikachu. There are so many other ways that they could have done this design. Look at what Huawei did with the Mate 20 Pro. The camera housing is centered in the back and the cameras line up in a perfect grid array with the flash. Look at any Samsung from the Galaxy S8 and before it. Centered cameras, even if it only had one at the time. They could have even done what the S10s did and make them one large strip. If I designed the phone myself, I would have done a few things. One, Fix whatever is going on with the wild camera positioning. Apple's always been a minimalist company when it comes to their products, 
That's why they took out the headphone jack to get symmetry. Also, courage. Two, make the entire camera housing black. It makes the space between the camera frame and lenses themselves less jarring to look at. Doesn't matter what color the rest of the phone is. Black goes with everything. And the Google Pixel 4 is going to end up doing the exact same thing as the iPhone 11 and place the cameras, flash, and microphone wherever they see fit. I'm super disappointed because I was actually hoping the Pixel 4 could be my next smartphone, but I'm really not looking for a copycat of a design I already hate. Let's call this one a 2.5 because it really only applies to the 11 as opposed to the Pro models. Do something entirely different with the camera housing. They already had to design a new housing for the iPhone 7 Plus and 8 Plus over the iPhone 7 and 8. Since the 11 only has two cameras to begin with, minimize all the dead space that you end up seeing. No one said the iPhone X had a bad design, and since Apple recycles old designs anyway, there's no shame in sticking with that camera housing for simplicity's sake. If you've stuck through this video for this long, then good on you. I'm surprised you listened to me ramble for this long. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below, and I'll answer pretty much everything. If you like what you saw, you know what to do, and if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed, because I love making these kinds of videos for you. And as always, have a good one. I think I can ask for now.